Well, how's everybody doing today? I hope everybody is doing just fine. I hope God has blessed you this week like I know he has. I know you done took you through, through things and you was more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus this week. I know that you learned that you can do all things through Christ who give you strength. And you realize that your victory is in your faith in Christ Jesus and in the Holy Spirit and in the Word of God and in God. And with that said, I know that you've been blessed this week. I know whatever trials you had to face, I know that you conquered it through Christ Jesus. I already know that because God don't fail. God is a successor and he will make sure that you succeed as long as you stay with him and be obedient to him and his word and have faith in his son Jesus Christ who is our salvation, who is our freedom, who is our deliverance and his blood that cleanses you from sin and it's a blessing this week. But this week, I got to give honor to God and I got to give honor to Jesus Christ. <laughs> because if it wasn't for them, we would all be through. But it's by God's grace and mercy that we done made it this far. And then we go farther because we have eternal life. <laughs> we don't just have a temporary physical life, but we got eternal life that we're going to spend with Jesus, <laughs> that we're going to spend with the Heavenly Father, <laughs> that we're going to spend with God Jehovah, that we're going to spend with His Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so that's a blessing within itself, eternity. So our life don't stop when we die. Our life goes on and on and on. We have a life that never ends through Jesus Christ. But today I want to talk to you today about the fruits of the Spirit. And the title of this is going to be the fruits of the Spirit. Because I think it's very important for you to start knowing what you have in you so that you can start receiving it and letting it be a part of your life as you grow in Jesus Christ, as you grow in the Spirit of God. I think it's very important that you understand this because your life is in it. The new you is in it. This is who you are now. And I just want to talk about the fruits of the Spirit. There can be other, a lot of different things I can speak on in the Spirit, but today I want to basically just talk on the fruits of the Spirit. And first you got to understand what a fruit is in order for you to understand the fruits of the Spirit. See, a fruit is defined anything that produce. So, this Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, this Spirit will produce different things in you. And that's why it is called the fruit of the Spirit. Because of what it produced in you. And that's what makes it good. I want to inform you what is produced in you through the Spirit of God. I want you to know that now. Because you need to know what's in you. God has put true quality in you. Understand that. And character in you. Through the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Through the fruit of the Holy Spirit. We're going to talk about these fruits down the line. But right now, I just want you to know that you got the fruits of the Holy Spirit in you. You have been, look here, look here, now, now check this out. You have been recreated through the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. You have been recreated through the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. Which is the Spirit of God. So now you can tell somebody, I got God in me because God's Spirit is in me. Because <laughs> I got God's Spirit in me because you got the Spirit of God in you. Today, I'm going to speak on the fruits of the Holy Spirit which you have in you. See, once you became born again and you received the Spirit of God, <laughs> you received the fruits of the Spirit. You received the fruits of the Spirit. See, these fruits will develop in you as long as you keep the faith in God. Jesus, the Holy Spirit and God's word. As long as you keep the faith. But not only do you got to keep the faith in God's word and in Jesus and everything that pertains to the kingdom of God, but you also, but you also got to apply God, Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God's words in your life daily. See, if there's no application with your faith, your faith is dead. But if you want your faith to work in your life, 
And if you want the fruits of the spirit to work in your life, guess what? You got to apply them in your life through application. See, that's the only way that you can activate the fruits of the Holy Spirit in your life is by having faith in them and applying them. By having faith in them and applying them. So we're going to go over what these fruits are, but it's most important that you understand you got to work on applying these in your life through faith. Through faith. If you're working on it and something falls, keep the faith and keep applying and you will watch how the spirit work in you you will work how the spirit will change you you will work how your character change how your behaviors change how your thinking change how everything about you change through the power of the holy spirit but today i just want to speak on the fruits of the spirit this uh, that spirit is something else see the world was created by the spirit god spoke in the word and the spirit did it see you understand the word became came flesh by the spirit <laughs> see what I'm saying by the spirit of God by the spirit of God but 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 then you but you must know without a doubt this is who you are now in your inner being so otherwise what I'm telling you you got to know who you are inside yourself through the fruits of the spirit through the spirit of God it's time for you to start learning who you are in the spirit of God. And the fruits of the spirit is just a part of it. But you are a lot more than that in the spirit of God. But you got to let the spirit of God work in your life. That's why it's so valuable today that I bring you the fruits of the spirit. The fruits of the spirit. So now, let's go to the verses dealing with the fruits of the spirit. And I'm going to be dealing with the fruits of the spirit out of Galatians 5, 22-23. First, I'm going to read it to you. And then I'm going to explain them individually to you. Okay? But first, let's just read them. Galatians 5, 22-23. But the fruits of the spirit is love. Understand that. It is joy. It is peace. It is long suffering. It is gentleness. It is goodness. It is faith. It is meekness. And it is temperance. That's what the fruit of the Spirit consists of. So, with that said, now, first let's deal with love. Love is a word that people use in many different and different forms. A lot of times the word love is used for lust. <laughs> But today, I'm going to show you God meaning for the word love. Love can be a desire for something highly. It can be like a craving for Jesus, a craving for God. It's a desire. That's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you care about me, keep my commandments. See, love cover a lot of channels. But to fully understand the love that I'm talking about, to fully understand the love that I'm talking about, you got to go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. In uh, the King James Version, we don't call it love. It's called charity. And when you develop these charity in you, and then you will be able to live a life of love. Through the characters of 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And that's the G2. So let me read. Let me read what I wrote so that I can give it to you better. To fully understand the characters of love, as well as develop love in your life or in your heart, you have to live by charity. You have to live by charity. You have to let charity rule in your life. And if you want to find out exactly what charity is, you will have to go to 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8. And then you have to start applying charity in your life. You got to let that charity become a part of you. And that comes through the spirit too. And that comes through the spirit. That comes through the spirit of God. So you already have charity. But now you got to let the spirit of God rule over you so that you can live in charity. And then we got another thing called joy. 
It's another fruit of the spirit. It's called joy. See, joy is to be cheerful, to be glad, and to be happy. And you have that joy through the spirit of God. You have that joy in you right now. I know some people say happiness and joy is different, but I'm going to put it to you like this. You can only have true happiness when you got true joy, and you can only have true joy through the spirit of God. It's not about a feeling to feel happy. It's about a joy that's in you that keeps you happy. You ain't got to worry about what somebody else doing to make you happy because you got joy in you that keeps you happy. You got joy in you that keep you glad. You got joy in you that keep you cheerful as long as you live in that joy. As long as you let the joy of the Lord rule in your life, you can, con you can constantly live in joy. You can constantly be happy. You can constantly be cheerful. You can constantly be glad if you let the joy of the Lord rule in your life. If you let the joy of the Lord rule in your life, which is in the spirit that he now placed in you through the fruits of the spirit. Now let joy rule in your life through Jesus Christ. Let joy rule in your life through the Holy Spirit. And then maybe you understand where I'm coming from. But sometimes that joy can't rule in your life because you get stuck on you. See, when you get stuck on you, that uh, that stops the spirit from working through you. So you got to get out of you and get into the joy of the spirit so that that joy can work in your life. You got to believe it and receive it. And then the next one is peace. And I'm talking about a fruit. See, now you got peace in you, but you got to know that you got this peace in you if you want this peace to work in your life. And you got to understand that this peace is not from man. You got to understand this peace is not from you. But you got to understand this peace come from God. And this peace that I'm talking about is called inner peace. It's called inner calmness. It's called stress free. It's called inner comfort. It's called freedom from worry, frustration, etc. If you allow the peace of the spirit to work in your life if you allow the peace of God to work in your life but you got to allow that peace to work but I'm gonna tell you that you got it now develop it but you got it in the spirit you got to believe it in order to receive it you got to trust it in order for it to work. We got to quit getting frustrated and miserable over nothing because we got peace we got peace from Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit that's now in you that you receive. <clears throat> and then there's another fruit of the Spirit that you got to understand that you got in you. And this one is this one right here is kind of difficult to understand because it deals with long suffering or suffering long. Whichever way you want to say it, but it's got to do with having problems in your life. It's got to deal with hardship. But it's but 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 that long suffering actually mean to endure suffering, to endure wrongdoing, to endure misfortune, to, to endure hardship with patience, with calmness. See, there was a time that you couldn't deal with long suffering without getting mad and frustrated and angry and want to do something stupid but when you deal with long but when you let the long suffering that god put in you work in you you will be able to endure suffering with patience you better endure suffering with calmness you better endure suffering <laughs> you be able to endure suffering with comfort. You be able to endure suffering with joy. Go back to that fruit. You be able to endure suffering with peace. Oh, we're talking about the fruits of the spirit. But you be able to endure all that with gentleness, which is the next fruit. Which is the next fruit? The next fruit is called gentleness. Gentleness. And when you hear the word gentleness, you think about something soft. So let's say, see, when you're gentle, you're not harsh. 
When you're gentle, you're polite. When you're gentle, you're respectful. When you're gentle, you are kind. And that's the spirit that you have in you. That's the fruit that God put into you now. So you can be kind to others. So you can respect others. So you can be polite to others. That's the spirit that you have in you. That's the fruit of the spirit that you have in you that only God can give you. You can't get it from no place else. And it only comes through Jesus Christ. See, you got to understand everything comes through Jesus Christ. You got to keep the faith in Christ in order for the fruits of the Spirit to work in your life. You got to keep faith in the Holy Spirit in order for the fruits of the Spirit to work in your life. You got to believe that you got them fruits in you in order for the fruits of the Spirit to work in your life. Then the next one is goodness. Understand, goodness. See, I... I wrote a definition of understanding goodness is having godly behaviors and conducts and characters. <laughs> having godly behavior, characters, and conduct is goodness. So that's the way we're supposed to carry ourselves as a child of God. We're supposed to be representing Jesus Christ. And at the same time we represent Jesus, we are representing God. So when you become an ambassador of Jesus Christ, you are also becoming an ambassador of God. And therefore, we should have godly behaviors, godly characters, and godly conducts. You understand? So that, uh, with that all said, that means to be living by God's Christian standards. So we should be living by the New Covenant standards. So we should be living by the New Testament standards. And we can only live by the New Testament standard by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that is now in us. <laughs> by the power of the Holy Spirit that is now in us. So you have goodness in you. And not only do you have goodness in you, you have faith. Another fruit is called faith. See, some of us didn't have no faith in, uh, in Jesus Christ. Some of us didn't have no faith in God. Some of us didn't have no faith in the Holy Spirit. See, but, but, but once you truthfully have faith, guess what? The Spirit will increase your faith because He's going to give you a fruit of faith. So when the Spirit comes in you, your faith grow in Jesus. Your faith grow in God. Your faith grow in the Holy Spirit. But I want you, but I want to break faith down to you and explain some things about faith to you so you can understand faith. See, faith in the fruits of the Spirit is to assume the fruit of the Spirit is real. See, the fruits of the Spirit cannot work in your life until you see it as real and as true. See, then you have to accept the fruits of the Spirit as real. It can't be fake. It can't be way off. It's got to be real to you in order for it to work. It's got to be real. It's got to be alive, you understand, in order for the fruits of the Spirit to work in your life. And then the fruits of the Spirit, then you have to commit and trust the fruits of the Spirit. So that means now you got to commit to the fruits of the Spirit. That means you got to apply the fruits of the Spirit in your life. That means you got to trust that the fruits of the Spirit is right. You got to believe and commit and trust in the fruits of the Spirit. Now, that's not, this is dealing with faith. And then you got to have another thing, to have confidence in the fruits of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You got to have confidence in the fruits of the Spirit in order to have the fruits of the Spirit to work for you. And confidence is to be assured within yourself. So you got to be sure within yourself that the fruits of the Spirit works. You got to be confident in yourself that you have the fruits of the Spirit in you. You got to be confident in yourself that you can let the fruits of the Spirit rule in your life. See, this is Jesus talking to you. You got to let the fruits of the Spirit works in your life. See, you can do all things through Christ, but you got to let the fruits of the Spirit work in your life. So therefore, what it's saying is, uh, you got to be obedient to the fruits of the Spirit. And you got to believe it there. Then there's another part of the fruits of the Spirit. It's called meekness. Meekness. And to be meekness means to be humble-hearted. It means to have a humble heart. It means to have a humble heart. 
It's also to be free from self-pride. See, in order to be meek, you got to be free from selfish pride. You can't be thinking that everybody is under you and that you're better than them. No, you got to drop that kind of pride. The only thing you should be proud of is to be a child of God. And you should walk with your head up. But that self-pride will destroy meekness. See, because meekness is a humble heart. And when you study humble, you will find out that humbleness got to do with being kind, being nice, being respectful. So when you are a meek person, see, so a lot of these things collide with each other. They connect with each other. They do the same thing. But you got to be, you got to be kind. You got to be respectful. That's what a meek person do. Polite, a meek person, submissive. Hey, but you be submissive to God, be submissive to the Holy Spirit, and let meekness work in your life. And then the, then the last one that I'm talking about in Galatians 5, 22, I mean 23, is temperance. 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 I do a lot of translation call it self-control. It do got something to do with self-control. But the, but the truth to the matter I'm going to say what I got to say, then I read. But the truth to the matter, you cannot have self-control without not letting the Spirit control you so that you can have power over sin. Because if you don't, you can't have no control because your sin will control you. Understand this. Temperance, having self-control through the power of the Holy Spirit, which will produce godly discipline which will produce godly discipline. So through the spiritual self-control that you receive from the fruits of the Spirit, that means you will be able to be obedient to God. That means you will be able to do what God wants you to be. That means your life will be built around God. Everything about you will be built around the kingdom of God. Everything you do will be built around the Godhead. See, you got to understand that. And that is the fruits of the Spirit. That is the fruits of the Spirit. But I want to go on a little further because in, in my closing, I would like to read Ephesians 5, verses 9, 10, 11. Because this talk about the fruits of the Spirit, but in a different way. So, for the fruits of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the life. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. It will let you know what is acceptable unto the Lord. And then it goes on to say, Have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather correct them. So he said, When you got the fruits of the Spirit in you, let the fruits of the Spirit work in your life and stay away from the, the fruits. That's no good. So you got good fruits and you got bad fruits. But the fruits of the Spirit is all good fruits. But I want to go back to verse 9. And verse 9 say again, for the fruits of the Spirit is all goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is, dig this, it say, is all goodness. The fruits of the Spirit is all goodness. It's all about goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is righteousness. The fruits of the Spirit is all good. And the fruits of the Spirit is about righteousness. And the fruits of the Spirit is true. So, this describes what the fruits of the Spirit is and what it consists of. So, in order for the fruits of the Spirit to work in your life completely, you have to work out of goodness. You have to work out of righteousness. And you got to work out of truth. And you can only do that by following the new covenant. You can only do that by following God's word. You can only do that by humbling yourself to Jesus Christ. You can only do it by being obedient to the word of God. And when you're obedient to the word of God, God's grace just shine all over. And when you love God and you, and you do God's commandment as he told you to do, he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. That means to do my to do my words according to the new covenant. That means that mean you love God. <laughs> That's a revelation to God. <laughs> That's giving God worship. <laughs> Obedience is giving God worship. Worship. Obedience is giving God's praise. Obedience is being submissive to God. Obedience is being under God's authority. See, that's what it's all about, too. See, a lot of people don't think they have to be obedient because they say they saved by grace and not by works. Now your works don't save you. And you are saved by grace. 
and y'all saved by grace. But once your salvation takes place, there's something inside of you that should make you want to do what God say do. There should be a transformation that took place inside of you that make you want to do the will of God, that make you want to do the will of Jesus, that make him the savior of your life for real, through true deliverance, you understand? So, obedience is important. That's why he said, if you love me, keep my commandments. He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Well, uh, I hope this was a blessing to you, the fruits of the spirit. I hope it gave you some kind of insight and I hope it helped you in your life with Christ and to know that now you are a new person in Christ Jesus and you have the fruits of the spirits inside of you. And now it's time to start developing what you have inside of you to come to come to, to continue to grow in the spirit and become that trans and become transformed as God wants you to be transformed into the likeness of his son so that you can have the mind of Christ. So you can think like Christ. So I hope it was a blessing. As you know, I'm on YouTube under Thomas Patterson. Feel free to go to my channel, Thomas Patterson. There might be some videos or messages there that you would like to hear. And may God always bless you and take care of you always. But today, Heavenly Father, I ask you to help them develop the fruits of the Spirit in their life today, Heavenly Father, to teach them, to show them, to inspire them, Heavenly Father, to continue to do your will and nobody else will, to honor your Son, Jesus Christ, and to believe truthfully and not in vain, and to be obedient to your words, Heavenly Father, help them all in the name of Jesus. Amen.